полчаса назад у нас первый боевой товарищ 200 на подвозе воды на разгрузке 20 мина прилетела метров 6-8 погиб наш товарищ Косова Ванина Алексей 8 рота Вылетели стены в ангаре. Бетонные стены. Вчера они еще стояли. Царство восьмая рота. Мы сегодня с Ванькой только-только ему хаб скрутили запчасти, просил. Reports that thousands of North Korean soldiers may soon join Russia in the war in Ukraine have reignited discussions about the possible deployment of European troops to support Kiev. Political reports. Lithuanian Foreign Minister Gabrielos Landsbergis told the publication that European countries should reconsider French President Emmanuel Macron's proposal to send troops to Ukraine. Landsbergis stressed. If the information about the participation of North Korean soldiers and the supply of ammunition to the Russians is confirmed, we must return to discussing the ideas proposed by Macron. The idea was floated back in February, but was rejected by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who promised that no European or NATO troops would be deployed to Ukraine. Western leaders have been cautious in commenting on the reports. NATO Secretary General Mark Root and U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin have not yet confirmed the information, although Austin has said the possible deployment of North Korean troops is a concern. South Korea already plans to send a delegation to NATO headquarters to discuss its intelligence on North Korean troop movements, but some European officials believe the West is being too cautious. Rio Terhas a former commander of the Estonian Armed Forces and a member of the European Parliament said the West was using uncertainty about the reliability of intelligence as an excuse for inaction. He said integrating North Korean troops into Russian units could be a complex operational task with minimal impact on the fighting. At the same time, Teras said Europe should seriously consider sending troops to Ukraine. It's important to have that as an option. Teras stressed, adding that such a possibility could be useful if the conflict continues. According to media reports, Seoul is now considering the possibility of sending intelligence officers and experts on North Korean tactics to Ukraine. Chairman of the Council of Reserves of the Ground Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ivan Tamochko, believes that military personnel from North Korea are already participating in the Russian Federation's war against Ukraine. It is expected that the Russian Federation will send military personnel from North Korea to the battlefield in the Kursk region. The UK says it will loan Ukraine £2.26 billion as part of an international agreement to use profits from frozen Russian assets to help the country resist and rebuild. Rachel Reeves, British Treasury Chief said the money will ensure that Russian assets frozen in Europe will be used to help fund the war effort in Ukraine. Reeves made the comments as she and British Defense Secretary John Healy met with Ukrainian soldiers being trained in the UK. The money is Britain's contribution to a $50 billion loan package agreed in June by the group of seven wealthy industrialized nations, with the money coming from interest on Russian central bank assets sitting frozen, mostly in Europe, 
since the invasion of Ukraine in 2022. However, making it happen has become bogged down because the Allies have not agreed on how to structure the loan. It's unclear how quickly the UK money will reach Ukraine. The British government said it would introduce domestic legislation in the coming weeks to enable the transfer of the new funds to Ukraine as quickly as possible. The money comes on top of Britain's £3 billion in annual support for Ukraine. Healy said the U.K. is using the corrupt money from Putin's own regime against him and putting it in the hands of Ukrainians to fight for their freedom. It's a huge honour to have the opportunity to meet Ukrainian soldiers who are being trained here in Britain and will return shortly to the front line. Today I'm able to announce £2.3 billion of support to Ukraine in the form of a loan that will be paid back by the extraordinary profits being made on frozen Russian assets. So this will ensure that Russian assets frozen in Europe that the extraordinary profits on that will be used to help fund the war effort in Ukraine. The UK and the defence of Europe starts in Ukraine. It could not be more important to us. Ukraine are on the front line against Russia's aggression, but they are defending all of Europe, including the United Kingdom. And this is just one way, on top of the support that we've already provided, of ensuring that Ukraine has the finances and the resources and the training to continue their fight. Slava Ukraine! Slava! This is billions of extra pounds that, as a UK Labour government, we're putting into the fight for Ukraine to protect its freedom uh, and its future. It will allow Ukraine to purchase a, a, the range of weapons and systems they need in order to defend their territory and fight for their future. There's only one nation waging war in Europe and that's Russia in its illegal invasion of Ukraine. Putin could stop this war tomorrow by pulling back. In the meantime, we will do everything we can to stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. And this is a government that in the three months since the election has stepped up our support for Ukraine, made extra commitment, not just this year, but for future years. And here we're making announcement of billions more pounds in loans for Ukraine using the corrupt money from Putin's own regime against him and putting it in the hands of Ukrainians to fight for their freedom.